In this video, we're going to expand your decision statement vocabulary by introducing the conditional operator as well as the switch statement. And remember that decision statements change the flow of, of the execution of code by evaluating and redirecting the flow of code from a sequential line-by-line -line processing to bypass entire blocks of code that don't apply to the current situation. Okay, so let's set up the example that we did previously when we were working with the if statement. In fact, if you don't feel like setting this all up, I've already got a project that we can start with. Uh, so I'm going to copy that, or I already did copy that, to my projects directory. And so now I'm just going to open up a project uh, called Switch Decision Statement Setup. You should be able to download this from the very place where you downloaded or watched this video. Okay, so as we see, we have kind of the same little uh, fake game that I created here that allows the user to type in one, two, three, or some other value. And we want to print out then the result of the game in this text block here at the bottom. Uh, and so what we're gonna do to begin this is talk about the conditional operator. We introduced this briefly in our conversation about operators and operands, uh, but I haven't really showed it in action. So as we get started here, what I'm gonna do, actually let's double click the play button, and I wanna write some code, and we're gonna start with Okay, so before I go and start explaining the code here, because some of it might be a little bit new to you, let's go ahead and run the application just to make sure it works. And let's try another value now just to see what happens. Okay, so let's stop debugging the application. Great. Okay, so you can see in just two lines of code, I was able to duplicate multiple lines of code that we wrote before, or at least get kind of close. Not exactly the same functionality, admittedly, but I can do an awful lot here in just one line. So again, I'm going to test the condition that's inside of the open and close parentheses. If this equates to true, then I'm going to set our new string variable called message equal to the word boat. But if this equates to false, so if my text box dot text is not equal to one, then I'm going to set the message variable equal to car. And then I'm going to simply print out uh, you want a boat or you want a car into the text block dot text property. Now, admittedly, this is probably new to you as well, the string dot format. We're going to devote uh, a whole video to formatting strings and working with strings. So uh, just to kind of give you a, a brief preview, all this does is replace anything inside of the curly brace uh, with this variable message. So it will, the format command, uh, the format method will take this value and substitute it out with the value that's saved in the message variable. Okay, and we can have multiple, uh, for example, I could have another one here and then add another value here, some variable that I've created, okay? And that's not gonna work at all. But I just wanted to illustrate how that works. It's just a fancy way of creating that um, this this line of code that we've looked at before and I don't want to get too far into this but at this point I have to finish up this thought at least and that line of code would do the exact same thing okay but I want you to get uh, familiar with the string dot format because there's a lot more functionality that's available to you with the string dot format method okay we'll come back to that in another video all right so let's delete this and let's comment this out so in that one line of code, I was able to reduce what I would have to spend potentially a number of lines of code. In fact, give me one second here to just type out all the code required to, re to recreate that example using the if statement and else statement that we've uh, used in previous videos. Okay, so you can see here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines of code that I was able to uh, reproduce in simply two lines of code. 
Uh, so this inline conditional operator is extremely valuable. It's a beautiful shortcut. It allows me to keep my code nice and compact if all I need to do is compare for either true or false on some condition. If I need something more elaborate that I'm going to have to revert back to uh, the if statement. Or I can move on to a different type of decision statement called the switch. So let me comment this out and now let me write some more code here to show us to show some other options. And then I'm going to go ahead and borrow this line of code so I don't have to type that. Okay. So um, this little passage of code that I wrote here uh, uses the switch statement to evaluate many potential values and handle each potential case. Generally, if you have a lot of potential values, you can write this intent more succinctly by using the switch statement instead of the if statement. Uh, what's the, the main difference between the two, uh, between the, the if statement and the switch statement? Uh, basically, exclusivity. Uh, we could write if statements so that one or more of the else statements are true. With the switch statement, only one of these can be true. So let's pick apart the structure of this switch statement that, that I just wrote. First, we begin with the keyword switch, followed by a value in parentheses that we want to evaluate. As you can see below that, we have a block of code where a number of cases are defined. Each case has a possible value followed by a colon. And then below that, we have one or more lines of code that get executed if that particular case is true. Also, each case contains a break keyword, a break statement, which tells the runtime to stop evaluating and just move on out of that code block. So then at the very bottom, there's the default case, as we can see, which is similar to that final else statement that we had in the uh, if else structure that we did in a previous lesson. So if no other case is true, then this optional default case should be executed. All right. So generally, it's a good practice to prefer if statements until the list grows so long of possible options that uh, that it doesn't really make sense anymore or when there's some sort of exclusive condition that you're trying to achieve uh, and then in that case then the switch statement might might be the better option uh, so for example the user can type either one two three maybe he could type four five six seven in that case the list grows longer he can't type one and two so the switch statement makes more sense because it's exclusive you can either type one or two the if statement is better uh, if you need more than one possible outcome, then you can create it in such a way that additional options are evaluated. Okay, so just to make sure this works, I'm going to start debugging the application. And uh, here I'll just play the number three, and then I'm going to play the letter B. <laughs> and we get the response we were expecting. Okay, so now we have three ways to write a decision statement. If we need an inline option, we can choose the inline conditional operator like we did here at the very beginning, right? And saved a lot of keystrokes by using just an inline option. That comes in handy a lot. Uh, if we need exclusivity, we can use the switch statement. For all other cases, we can rely on the syntax that we previously learned for uh, the if statement and that should fit the bill most of the time. Okay, so now we're armed with a full arsenal of uh, decision statements, and we can move on to iteration statements, and we'll pick that up in the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thank you.